Do you think an image can save lives from cancer? Well, I'm a doctor in the field of cancer, but not in the way you might think. Instead of using biology and chemistry to save lives, I use pixels and paper. And today I want to talk to you about how design can become a vital part of the healthcare system and how my breast cancer charity has saved lives around the world. Today's talk may even save your life. So I was starting my master's degree in graphic design when something sad happened. I lost my grandmother to breast cancer, my second grandmother to breast cancer. And I really wasn't sure what to do with this information. I realized I didn't know that much about breast health. Part of the reason for that was how I learned about bodies at school, which is by looking at images like this and studying the physiques of bodybuilder Unix. <laughs> so you see, for most of us in school, we learn about every part of the body except breasts. And it's up to us to learn about this information when we're older somewhere else. But the reality is we usually don't, unless we run into a problem. See, we have this misconception that if we don't have breast cancer in our family, that somehow we're safe. But the reality is that 85% of those diagnosed with breast cancer have no family history. And although rare, men can get it too. And sometimes they're the first person to find it on their partner before they do. So it really involves all of us. In fact, in 2020, breast cancer became the most prevalent cancer in the world. To put that into perspective, every 15 seconds, somewhere around the world, a person is told, you have breast cancer. And those people are our grandmothers, our parents, our siblings, and our friends. So what's the biggest factor in being able to survive it? Finding it early. See, when breast cancer is found in stages one and two, the survival rates are incredibly high. But when found in stage four, it drops significantly. Now, there are many different types of breast cancer, and not all of them can be found before at stage four. But to put it into perspective, in the U.S., about 10% of those diagnosed with breast cancer are diagnosed with stage four. However, in places like Nigeria, that number is closer to 50%. And that really needs to change. So what needs to be in place to be able to find breast cancer earlier? Well, having educated doctors, a support system, access to tools and testing, and really importantly, educated patients who can do two things. One, be able to book a screening appointment, such as a mammogram. Two, be able to recognize a symptom and report it and advocate for themselves. Both are really important. So screening is great because a mammogram can find a cancerous lump before it can be felt. But according to the World Health Organization, only 63% of countries actually have screening programs. So of those, only 10 to 50% are actually able to reach their intended population. So a lot of women are getting left out. Self-exams are great because they're free. And why shouldn't we know our own bodies? And that's exactly what a self-exam is. It's not a hunt for a cancer, but a way of knowing what's normal for us. So if something does change, it's much easier to spot. To illustrate that, I'd like for you to raise your hand and put your three middle fingers together. This width of your three fingers is the average size of a lump found when there are no self-exams or mammograms happening. However, for people who do practice regular self-exam, the average size of a lump found is the width of your thumb. For people who get one mammogram, the average size of a lump found is the width of an index finger. But better yet, for those that get regular mammograms that compare those x-rays from year to year, the lump can be the smallest, which is the width of the tip of your pinky finger. Now, I realized after I finished my master's degree in graphic design, I was not going to be taken seriously as a designer in the healthcare field. So I decided to quit my job and move to London to get a PhD in design thinking for healthcare. What I wanted to do was to be able to find a way to educate people around the world across different languages, cultures, and literacy levels. And I discovered three things that hold us back from being able to engage with breast health information. The first one is taboo. Breasts are often associated with sex, which means the message gets censored. Second, fear. Cancer is often associated with death, so people avoid the topic altogether. The third is time. There are so many messages competing for our attention, it's really difficult for a message to rise to the top. And healthcare messages often kind of end up at the bottom. So I want to try this experiment with you. I'm going to flash on the screen two messages, and I want you to take notice which one you pay attention to. 
Ready? Now that was pretty quick. <laughs> and the reason for that is, according to research done by Meta, we decide within 0.7 seconds of seeing a message whether or not we're going to engage with it. So as you could tell, that image was really the only thing you saw. Text was practically invisible. And although images of breasts have tended to do pretty well historically as a way of grabbing attention, <laughs> we can't do it because of censorship issues. So my challenge was super easy. All I had to do was show breasts without showing breasts, make cancer friendly, do it in 0.7 seconds in a way that works around the world, and turn myself into a unicorn. <laughs> well, the reason why I'm here today is because I found a way to do it. See, to turn yourself into a design unicorn, the first thing you need to do is put yourself into the shoes of the people that you're communicating with. And you experience problems from their perspective. And that allows you to gain empathy. The problem is most designers don't get that chance. They're often handed content created by somebody else and told to tidy it up put it into a prettier format. And that's something that AI can do now easily. See, graphic design for a long time has been seen as a pretty packaging you apply just before a deadline. But actually, design is this wonderful, human-centered, creative-solving process of being able to understand users' needs on a really deep level and then creating intelligent, useful solutions that address those needs well. So I was my own boss on this project, so it meant I could spend all the time I wanted gathering empathy. And that's exactly what I did. So I spent time learning everything I could about self-exam. I observed communication patterns between patients and physicians and did lots of interviews. I was able to get a mammogram so I could know what it felt like. And then I interviewed radiologists and learned about all of the tests, all the way through to biopsy. See, when a patient is able to see an image like this, it makes it really easy for them to picture themselves going through that process. They can know what to ask for, they can know what to expect, and really importantly, when something is not being offered to them. For me, it was wonderful to be able to have the experience of going through that whole process of understanding it so that I could be able to have that empathy. And that empathy is what gave me insight. And insight is what makes great design. It's like having a magic power. My other magic power is being able to design with visual metaphor. I love to take a familiar object and put it into a new context to give it new meaning. So for example, using dandelions to illustrate the stages of cancer. Now, in order for me to be able to come up with a visual metaphor for breasts, I started by photographing jugs, cones, and melons. I went through 47 different objects before I finally found something that was perfect and unexpected. Lemons. Lemons are great because they look a lot like breasts without being breasts. They have skin, they have nipples, they're not attached to a body, so it means they are not representing a specific gender or age or ethnicity, which means it can communicate equally to everyone. Another great thing it can do is this. Communicate what a cancerous lump can often feel like without having to use any words at all. See, what happens in your brain when you see this image is that it triggers the memory of the last time you held a lemon seed between your fingers. You remember how hard it felt, that it had a slippery surface. And that information is not communicated to you through words, but through the language of your senses combined with your memories that's both seen and felt in an instant or in 0.7 seconds. It's not only a good metaphor on the outside, but the inside too. See, lemon anatomy and breast anatomy are remarkably similar. And this is useful because we're often told to look for a lump, but breasts are lumpy. By being able to illustrate breast anatomy in a way that explains the difference between what a normal lump feels like compared to a suspicious one, you can take a confused patient and turn them into a confident one. So all these images are great, but they're only as good as they're able to be seen. And for that requires funding and an organization. There are a lot of really good breast cancer charities that are focused on research and finding a cure. But I realize none of them were focused on 
early detection and doing it on a global scale. So I decided to leave my job as a professor and use my own savings to start my own charity as a single mom. <sighs> and so that's the magic formula, right? Just start a global charity, show a few lemons, <laughs> and tell people to keep up on the regular mammograms. Well, not quite. We actually need a few more lemons for that. And that brings me to the image that's responsible for saving lives around the world, which is this, that there are actually 12 signs of breast cancer, and it communicates in a way that requires very little text, and it's so detailed, it makes it easy for a patient to be able to recognize that on themselves. I'm happy to say that this image has now reached 1.85 billion people in 34 languages, online, on social media, in printed materials, through classes, and even an early detection app. Let me tell you about Bryony from Australia and her experience with this as a poster. She was getting ready to leave her doctor's office when she noticed this sitting on the desk. It caught her attention, so she decided to look more closely. Here's what happened. I saw the poster and looked at one of the symptoms, which happened to be the dimple in the lemon, and went, that actually looks like my breast. I have a dimple in my breast. That poster you have created has quite literally saved my life. She immediately made an appointment with her doctor, and within three weeks, she was starting chemotherapy for stage two breast cancer. Now, what would have happened if her doctor didn't have that poster? She probably still wouldn't know today that she has breast cancer. Imagine what would happen if that poster was in every exam room. Let me tell you about Jessica. Jessica saw our image on social media after a friend shared it. She said it made her curious, and she decided to keep up on her regular self-exams. When she was in her mid-30s, she noticed a lump and went to her doctor who told her she was too young for testing. It took three visits before she was able to convince him to get an ultrasound. They could see something on the imaging but said it wasn't of concern. However, Jessica knew at this point she was starting to display three symptoms of breast cancer, and her instincts were telling her something just wasn't right. So she advocated for herself pushed for a biopsy, and was diagnosed with a really aggressive form of breast cancer at stage one. Now, what would have happened to Jessica if her friend hadn't shared our image on social media? Let me tell you about Dawn. Dawn didn't see the image until after she was diagnosed with advanced breast cancer. If I'd have seen that poster in my GP clinic when I was waiting to be seen, I know I had things that I didn't know were signs of breast cancer, a lump in my breast, a lump under my armpit, raised vein, thickening of breast, and also um, redness and, and swelling. If I'd have known at the time that all these other things that I was demonstrating at the time were symptoms of breast cancer, I would not have left that GP surgery. You know, I absolutely would have fought my ground and said, I need to be referred. I want to see someone tomorrow. There aren't four or five signs of breast cancer. There's 12. 12 signs of breast cancer. You ask any woman out there to name 12, they won't. They can't. Why not? It, to me, it's ludicrous that we don't understand it or know it. And this is why, for me, it's about empowering women to understand what these symptoms can be and what these, you know, visual um, signs are. Dawn wanted to make sure that no one else was in her same position. So she worked with the NHS in Wells to get their seal on our posters and had it sent to every doctor's clinic in Wells. Before she graduated this life, she taught over 5,000 students and adults, several of whom said it made all the difference in saving their life. Today, we continue her legacy with over 800 trained volunteer educators in over 60 countries. Now, I'd love to tell you about how this campaign is working around the world. In order for our campaign to be global, it has to be able to adapt to local circumstances. So when we showed the campaign in Nigeria and Brazil, for example, this is what changed. It turned green. That's because in some parts of the world, lemons are green. We also wanted to know how our classes were working in Nigeria. 
We had over a thousand women taking our classes, and we surveyed them before and after to understand the differences in what they learned. We found that 96% reported feeling confident in being able to recognize the symptom of breast cancer, 98% said that they would report it to a doctor if they noticed a change, and 92% said that they would share the image. When we studied it in the Netherlands, we wanted to interview breast cancer patients to understand what their diagnostic experience was like. One of the questions we asked was, how many symptoms of breast cancer did you have at the time of your diagnosis? 11% reported having more than one symptom. However, when we showed them this image and asked them to identify the symptom or symptoms that they had, this happened. 44% reported having more than one symptom. This is really important because it's saying not every patient understood all the symptoms they had at the time of diagnosis, and even afterwards, weren't sure of all the symptoms to look out for after treatment, and that can make all the difference. Finally, let me introduce you to Jumatil. He is one of our volunteer educators in Indonesia, and he's able to educate in even the most conservative of circumstances, like, for example, an all-girls Muslim school. Here we have a man teaching breast health without any barriers whatsoever. Students in his classes are able to take cards home to their families in their own language to start discussions about breast health in ways that have never been able to happen before. Even the boys are excited to go home and talk to their mothers about breast health. And we see this approach working from Indonesia to South Africa. So what if every young person had the opportunity to learn about breast health at school and take this information home to their families, and they had an app to help them understand their risk and to keep up on screening and self-exams? What if all of us used this image as a way to start conversations with our own families or to share with our friends on social media or to send a text about an app we just learned about? What if as companies, instead of focusing on raising awareness that breast cancer exists, we took it a step further to actually educate customers and to offer classes to our employees to help them improve their breast health? Can an image save lives from cancer? Absolutely. Good design can save lives. This is what can happen in healthcare if we decide to harness the power of visuals to communicate. So let's put design doctors on the healthcare team and change the picture of cancer for good. Thank you.